Hey folks, Quilly Teen here. So this Saturday, July 12th, I will be live streaming a Dungeon Dragons 5th edition campaign. And uh, some of the players could make their own characters and some requested that I make one for them. So I will be making a 5th edition rogue right now uh, to fill that slot. Um, so what I've got open here, by the way, my uh, PDF reader that I'm using is Foxit Reader, which I find is quite handy and nice and free. Always had some pretty good luck with them. Anyway, uh, people ask that. So I've got my basic rules open. I've got my rogue here and let's, let's be clear. Rogue, not rouge. One is a color, one is something that shanks you in the back. All right, so uh, character name, I'm gonna leave blank so that they can fill that out for themselves. Class and level, obviously it's going to be a level one rogue. Uh, we don't know about background or race and alignment and so on and so forth, we're gonna keep going in and definitely not be evil. Probably will end up being something like chaotic good is probably the assumption. Maybe I've already started to fill this out at some point. It's weird that it's like auto. Oh, it's probably remembering from my previous thing. Oh, that's kind of handy. I didn't know this program did this. And we'll leave the player name blank as well, just for a little bit of anonymity over there. So, um, and, and yeah, that's probably what I'll do. I, I'm, I'll probably pick a background, maybe assign some traits and ideals and all that. But other than that, we'll leave some of these things blank, like uh, like gender and age and all those things. So the uh, player can fill them out themselves. So um, we're going to start off. Well, if we want, we can scroll down to the section where we make characters. And it brings you through things step by step. I don't know if I'm going to follow this exactly like race and class, like choose race first. I'm like, well, no, I already know what the class is and so on and so forth. Ability scores is pretty handy. Let's take a look at the races, though, and have a brief discussion about what we might want to pick for that. So sometimes you go and you try to play a character that's against type and sometimes you play a character that's with type. Like, for example, we might make a dwarf rogue, uh, maybe called Knuckles, Cl uh, King of the Wall Climbers. That's a reference to a comic called the uh, Knights of the Dinner Table. Very good. But I think here, and actually one of the other players wanted me to make a cleric and I actually went slightly against type with that cleric. So I think what we're going to do is go very, very traditional sort of setup and go ahead and make ourselves a halfling rogue. Halflings are very, very good at being rogues. So we may as well just play into that. So uh, base halfling gets the boosted dexterity, which tends to be the primary stat for a rogue. So it seems like a pretty good idea to go ahead and do that. And then specifically, we could go stout for the boost to constitution or lightfoot for the boost to charisma. Naturally, stealthy is handy, but I mean, how often do you really have to just hide behind a person? Um, whereas just, you know, sort of being tough with the uh, the extra hit points and the resistance to poison, that's got to be pretty good. Maybe, maybe we'll make a stout halfling as opposed to a lightfoot halfling um, and see how that goes. Although, I mean, we could have someone who's a, a witty sort of talker. I don't know what the rest of the party is going to make, but... Um, my cleric that I made is not very highly charismatic. So you know what? Actually, I think it's going to make sense. We need to make sure there's a, a face for the party and a, uh, a sort of a, a witty halfling rogue might literally be uh, what we need. So, OK, so we're going to get a boost to our dexterity by two and our charisma is going to increase by one. That, that's the important thing I want to know before we go and assign our attributes, because we can sort of, you know, min max a few things. Um, I, I think I'm going to be going with the, the point by system for this, which is pretty standard. We could also just take the, the standard array, of course, uh, which is this. Because we're playing an online campaign, I'm not going to be rolling. Uh, ooh, I think I forgot to make that clear to my players. Yeah, I'll have to make a follow-up email to them. Since we're playing online, don't roll because you'll be like, oh, I rolled all these 18s. No, either use the, the standard set of scores or just use the ability score by. So we're going to do that. So we've got 27 points to spend on our attributes based on this particular score or point arrangement over here. Now, our top priority will be our dexterity because we are going to be a rogue. We're going to have to, I don't know, pick pockets and open locks and uh, probably wear light armor, which means the high dexterity is very valuable. We know we get a plus two from being a halfling. And also it's on even numbers that you get your actual stat boost. So like going from if you have a 12, you've got a plus one to basically all your dexterity oriented rolls. Going up to a 13 really does nothing for you. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to spend and get a 14 in dexterity and we'll end up getting a plus two on top of that, which will effectively bring us up to a 16, which will give us a plus three to all of our dex oriented things. And that's going to be pretty good. So um, I'll just put, put in a 14 here for now. We will boost this up to a 16 once we factor in the scores. The next thing we know we're going to get a plus one to charisma. So Ideally, we want to put an odd number in charisma, so that way it'll bring us up to an even number. Um, now, if we want to be oops, really charismatic, we could go and put a 15 in there, and that would boost it up to a 16, which may be a good idea. Quite expensive to buy a 15, though, whereas if we put in a 13, which would give us a plus one and bring us up to 14, again, an odd number, 
it would only cost us five points. So it's a four point a four cost difference between the two in exchange for a plus one to charismatic stuff. And we want to be charismatic, but do we need to be that charismatic? Let's put in a 13 for now and then figure out what the rest of our costs will be. So right now we've spent um, a total of 12 points. So we still have 15 points left to spend, which is pretty good. Uh, I tend to like a relatively high constitution. Constitution makes you tough and harder to kill. Let's assume we want a, uh, a 14 in there at this point. And uh, what does that leave us with? We need decent numbers other places. Let's let's just ballpark. Let's put in a 10, a 10, and a 10, and figure this out here. Uh, I should probably be running a calculator. So that is 6 plus 7, so that's 13, plus another 7, which brings us up to 20, plus a 13, which brings us to 25. So we actually have two points left, um, which is enough to bump one of our 10s up to a 12. Hmm. Let's see what kind of traits use different stuff. Let's say, let's say we want this to be an intelligent rogue. Let's say we brought her or him uh, up to a 12, <laughs> her or him, she or him, uh, whatever, uh, to a 12 in intelligence that would boost our arcana, history, investigation, nature, religion, and that's it. If we went with wisdom instead, what could we potentially get? Animal handling, mm, insight might be really useful. Uh, medicine, I think our cleric is going to have the medicine traits. So that's not so important. Perception, which is incredibly valuable for a scout type of thing. Um, and survival is pretty nice too. You know what? I think we might go something like this. So end up with a character who's got no negatives whatsoever. Will be, is, is relatively tough and very dexterous and relatively charismatic. We could lower the constitution if we wanted to we could we could use it um now we're probably going to use finesse oriented weapons which means we're going to use our dexterity for attacks so we don't need a very high strength although a higher strength would translate to more damage on the attacks but i don't think that's going to be terribly important hopefully we can do a lot of sneak attacks in which case the strength won't matter as much because we're going to be adding some extra dice of damage just from the sneak attacks so the fact we don't have a high strength doesn't really matter matter so yeah we could lower the con by two and maybe bump up our intelligence um, that might be a thing. Actually, um, oops, I keep tabbing the wrong way. Going from 12 to 14. So if we, yeah, hmm, there's actually no real way. If we dropped a 14 down to a 12, that would give us three points. Leads to some, some awkward numbers. You know what? We're going to leave it like this. So two 14s, a 13, a 12, and a couple of 10s. Good. Now I'm going to add in my racial bonuses and bring that up to a 16. And that comes out to a 14, which feels pretty good altogether. We're going to come back to the saving throws and um, skill bonuses later on. Uh, oh, what I could do is put in the modifier. So that's a zero. This is a plus three. This is a plus two. That's a zero. That'll be a plus one. And that'll be a plus two to all related roles. Um, as a rogue in, where's the races? Or sorry, the classes. As a rogue in 5th edition Dungeon Dragons, actually if we go to the top of the chapter, we have D8 hit dice, which is different from the previous editions. So our hit dice, I guess we'd list it like this. We have one D8. And at first level, you automatically start with max hit points for your hit dice. So that would be eight plus your constitution modifier, which in this case is plus two. So we would start with 10 hit points, which is actually not bad for a first level character. You know, it's not terrible. Uh, well, actually, it'll probably be a relatively standard average amount. Luckily, as a rogue, you've got a few ways to sort of try to avoid bigger sources of problems. Uh, as a level one character, a proficiency bonus will start as a plus two. Our initiative modifier is based on the dexterity, so that'll start off as a plus three. And then we're actually going to go over to our racial setup again, find the halflings, and fill in the various traits from there. Um, reaches adulthood at the age of 20. Um, oh yeah, we'll leave that blank. The alignment, uh, we could potentially leave that blank as well, but I think chaotic good is probably a relatively good assumption. Our speed is only 25 and our size is small. So our speed, we do walk slightly slower than the average person who normally works at a 30. Um, now we can leave all that blank, okay. Uh, what else we get? We are lucky. When we roll a one on attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can reroll the die. So that's anything. Uh, in fifth edition, there's nothing called a skill roll or a skill check. Um, it's just an ability check. But if you happen to be proficient in the skill, then you will add your proficiency bonus to that. So it'll be something like, okay, uh, you are going to be doing a, um, like a stealth check, right? But it's a de dexterity check 
bracket stealth. So you use your dexterity modifier, and if you happen to be proficient in stealth, then you would add your proficiency bonuses the way they work it. So anytime you roll a one as a halfling, you get to re-roll it. On attacks, ability, checks, and saving throws. Basically, all d20 rolls. All right, that's a really good ability. Oh my god! I mean, if uh, if you do like roll a one and then you roll a second one on your reroll, you do have to keep that second one, even if it's another one. You don't get to keep rolling forever. Uh, brave. So we have advantage versus fear. What else do we have? Halfling nimbleness. We can move through the space of any creature larger than yours. Um, Something like that. Um, I spelt that wrong. Nimbleness. Nimbleness. There we go. Uh, languages. Read and write common and halfling. Okay, so languages are down here. So halfling common. What else do we have? And we've got the sub race. We are being a light foot halfling, which I suppose I should write up here, actually. Light foot halfling. Halflings are anything but light food, that's for sure. And naturally stealthy. Can hide behind creatures. All right. I think that does it for writing down our racial characteristics here. That's good. Let's go back down to our class and see exactly what being a rouge gives us. Um, so right there, yeah, uh, that's all description and the actual trait features. Okay. Um, oh, we should pick a background. And the reason I say that is because we get, as a rogue, we get to choose four skills we are proficient in from this list, but based on our background, we'll already get some proficiency. So we want to make sure we don't double up. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't remember, do we have, um, we've got bookmarks. Excellent. Ah, such a good feature. We want personality and background. So yeah, we could roll for all these, uh, height, weight stats, but we'll, uh, we'll leave it blank for now. Um, that way the player can fill it out. So the backgrounds in the basic book, they're not many. I think there's four, basically one that sort of coincides with every class. Ac Aqualite is sort of the cleric one. Although um, I actually made the that pre-made cleric, I gave it the soldier background just to make it a little bit more interesting and different. We'll go ahead and take kind of a criminal background. You know, we had maybe a bit of a rough life growing up. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. So our background will be criminal, criminal. And there's actually a sub choice that we can grab, um, a sub specialty. And specifically, I think we're going to take the burglar thing. We're going to sort of be the uh, the Bilbo burglar, the, the Bilbo of the party. Um, so that'll be our specialty. And so what do we get? So skill proficiencies, deception and stealth for free. So deception, which is charisma based ah, and stealth, which is super valuable and important for us. And we'll be super, super good at that. Uh, we also get a gaming set and some thieves tools. So for, uh, that's a proficiency, right? Tool proficiency. So, um, uh, proficient and see in maybe dice. Maybe we'll have a set of loaded dice on us as well, but we're really good at like dice gambling stuff um, and thieves tools. Okay. So use thieves tools to pick locks and things like that. And we'll get our proficiency bonus in there. And we start off with a crowbar. So we've got equipment over here. Crowbar. Um, what was the other thing? Uh, dark common clothes. We've got, uh, oh, including a hood and 15 gold pieces. So we'll put in 15 gold pieces over there. All right. Uh, there's also personality traits and, and things like that. Oh, variant criminal spy. Much different than you learn. Might have been officially sanctioned. Criminal contact. Okay. So. 
Okay, so it's just describing that we could describe ourselves as being a spy instead of a criminal. Reliable trust from your contacts acts as your liaison onto a network of criminals. You gotta get messages to and from your contact, even over great distances. Specifically, known local messengers, corrupt caravan masters, and CD sailors who can deliver messages for you. So you know, if you got some code words, maybe a secret hand sign that you can use to identify uh, some other people in sort of a like a big regional guild kind of thing, a thieves guild. Uh, and personality. All right, let's let's fill some of this in right now. Of course, the player can definitely choose to change this. But uh, let's try to paint a picture that might be really good here. Oh, maybe I would rather make new friends than a new enemy, right? That might fit in. We'll explain why you're so charismatic, for example. Uh, valuable, stay calm. Never pay attention to the risks. We'll open the sign. Oh, no, you know what? I like this. Uh, I'd rather make a new friend than a new enemy. Let's try to see if we can copy and paste. Sometimes you can't do that super well from a PDF, but that one worked out. Uh, ideal, and again, we could roll this, I suppose, but you know, I'm trying to come up with something that sort of fits. Chains are meant to be broken. Those would forge them. Uh, still from the wealthy, I can help people in need. Mm, I don't know about that. Um, and these are suggested uh, alignments that go with things. I'm loyal to my friends, not to any ideals, and, and everyone else can take a trip down the sticks for all I care, maybe. Spark a good and everyone, you know what? I like that one. Why did it, there we go. My text selection went away. That That is an ideal that we have. You know, we're kind of a happy-go-lucky halfling type. Um, I'm trying to pay off an old debt, ill-gotten gains to support my family. Oh, that might be nice. Something important was taken. Uh, greatest thief that ever lived. Terrible crime. Someone I love died because of a mistake. No, you know what? Let's, uh, there we go. Get our text selector back and try to got this. You know, a bit of a, a sad story. Ugh. Every now and again, it decides to do that. Um, as ill-gotten gains go to support my family. My ill-gotten gains go to support my family. Isn't that nice? And then we have some sort of fatal flaw. See something valuable, I can't think of it, but anything but steal it. Face a choice between money and my friends. You usually choose the money. Plan, I'll forget it. If I don't forget it, I'll ignore it. I have a tell, reveals when I'm lying, turn tail and run. Innocent person is in prison for a crime I committed. I'm okay with that. Woo! All right, let, let's take the fun one. Steal everything that isn't nailed down, and maybe some of the things that are. There we are. Good. All right. See, that should lead to some fun, good times. Let's do a quick save here to make sure I don't lose anything. And what is next? Okay, well, now that we've done that, we can go back to our class. Ooh, zoom me out quite a bit. And fighter rogue all right so we have proficiencies in light armor let's note that down light armor um all these weapons hopefully we can copy and paste and we can good uh we automatically get proficiency in thieves tools so that's a little bit redundant with the uh, criminal background but that's okay saving throws are good saving throws are dexterity and intelligence all right good to know and we have to choose from four abilities so we already have a deception we already have stealth which is good um persuasion might be handy and insight i like those ideas you know you're you're just you're you can't be bluffed but you can bluff other people and convince other people the face of the party kind of thing uh what else might we want um acrobatics probably a good idea for someone who might be a thief um Athletics might also be handy, mm, but you know what? Let's uh, let's grab a little uh, sleight of hand there. That that can be useful for a bit of pickpocketing from time to time. Okay, I like that kind of combination. And we start with some equipment. We can do the rapier or short sword. Now, can the short sword be finessed? That's a question that I would like to answer. Uh, short sword is a martial weapon. It is a finessable light weapon. And the rapier is not a light weapon, which means you can't really offhand it as well, but it is finessable. It also, it also does more damage. So we're going to give our rogue is going to start off with this equipment we start off with. A rogue is going to start off with a rapier. We're going to call it needle. Congratulations, you're now Arya Stark. So a rapier is gets a plus two proficiency bonus to start off with because we are proficient in it. And then as a melee weapon, you normally add your strength. But because it's a finessable weapon, we have the choice of adding our dexterity instead, which we will do, which means we end up with an attack bonus of plus five. Our damage will be 1d8. Uh, piercing, of course, because we are pointing, hitting people with the pointy end. Uh, we also get to start with either a short bow or a short sword. Um, 
Well, what's interesting, so you could go with the sort of ambidextrous build where you're just packing two short swords, uh, or you can main hand a rapier and then offhand a short sword as well which might be a viable way of doing it. I think I like the flexibility of starting with a short bow, uh, which would also have a plus five bonus, and I think has a 1d6 base damage, if I'm not mistaken. And we also start with uh, 20 arrows. Um, arrows, 20. Which our player may have to keep track of, because as a level one player, you're relatively poor. Uh, quite commonly, later on in the game, I say to people, "Listen, uh, just write like buy, you know, 200 arrows, and you know, excuse yourself that you're carrying this, and we'll just assume you never run out of ammo, and you're rich enough that buying replacement arrows don't even matter." Usually, at that point, you're mostly just tracking your magic arrows. At that point, so as long as you can say that you can justify that, yeah, I'm carrying lots of arrows on me, then I usually say that's good enough. But at level one. You got to keep track of that stuff. Um, we can start with either a burglar's pack, a dungeoneer's pack, or an explorer's pack. Well, let's take a look at what those different sets of equipment give us. Uh, where are the packs in here? Ah, here we are, the different packs. So the burglar's pack, uh, a thousand ball bearings, which are good to like, you drop them on the ground somewhere. And then when people come into the room, they trip uh, 10 feet of string, a bell. So again, maybe setting a little like alarm where the bell rings if someone hits that tripwire, five candles, a crowbar, which we actually get for free from being a criminal, a hammer, 10 pitons, which are used to uh, climb, hooded lantern, two flasks of oil, two days of rash, or five days of rations, tinderbox, water skin, 50 feet of hemp and rope. All right. It sounds pretty useful. Then we've got the Dungeoneer's pack, crowbar, hammer, pitons, torches, instead of a, of a, of a lantern. A tinderbox to light things on fire, 10 days of rations, a water skin, and 50 feet of rope. And the last was the explorer's pack. Backpack bedroll. Oh, the others don't have a bedroll, do they? Mess kit, tinderbox, torches, rations. Uh, well, this certainly sounds pretty handy if we're going to be on the road. But you know what? I mean, we're playing the burglar. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start with the burglar's pack there. Um, burglar's pack. Voila. Um, I guess we have to go back to classes, go back to rogue. It's too bad there's not more bookmarks. I guess I could make my own bookmarks actually in here, but you know, who, who wants to think about that? Uh, we also start with leather armor, two daggers and thieves tools on top of all that. Right. Okay. So right here, these tools, uh, leather armor. And dagger times two, going to be plus five. Daggers can be thrown or wielded to as an offhand thing or something like that. Um, and leather armor. Where do we actually write the armor? I think I think we just write it in the equipment here. So leather armor. Now we need need to know our uh, stats when we bring our leather armor. Exactly how well defended are we? Leather armor has an AC of eleven plus a dexterity modifier. At some point, we'd probably like to upgrade to leather studded leather when we've got a bit of cash, but that's okay. So our armor class will be 11 plus our dexterity, which is three. So that will leave us with an AC of 14, which is not stupendous. Now, if we could pick up a shield proficiency bonus at some point, we could start to offhand a shield while we poke people with our rapier. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. In fact, we do have enough spending money available because we have 15 gold pieces. We could do that. Um, it might just be awkward if we're switching to a, uh, a short bow, for example. Um, also, if we do want to offhand a weapon, which we could, I believe the rules are, and we're going to have to double check that, I believe the rules for dual wielding in 5th edition are very straightforward. You can do it, you can wield a, a light weapon in your offhand, and that would give you an extra attack. Uh, the exception is that you cannot add your, um, your strength bonus to the damage, which would turn out would be perfectly fine for this rogue. So I think that it's very likely that this rogue here will probably offhand a dagger, uh, you should, might get might get fancy and call it a mangosh um, while fighting with the rapier. So we get a second attack in there, which is pretty good, I would say. Um, because, yeah, it doesn't matter. We don't get a strength bonus. Uh, if you can make a fighter with a specific option, that would still allow you to add your strength bonus to your offhand attack, which would be pretty good. Uh, and there'll probably be feats and all kinds of different things you can do with that later on. But here I think we'll do pretty well. Okay, so um, what is left on our character sheet? Well, we've got most of this filled out. Um, over here, these are details that uh, someone else can fill out uh, whenever they want. Not going to be a spellcaster. I think we might be done with our rogue here. 
And I think that's a mighty fine rogue. I mean, obviously very, very, you know, standard and basic. There's only so many things you can do at level one, especially with the basic rules. Of course, once we get the player's handbook, there'll be quite a few extra options. So um, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, listen, if it's still before July 12th, make sure to stop on by this Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Daylight Time. We will be playing some Dungeons and Dragons on the live stream and you'll see this character in action. See you there. Bye bye.